Hi, my name is Dan Grissom. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science at Azusa Pacific University in Southern California. And in this tutorial, I'm basically going to show you how to uh, write and compile Java code and C++ code in Windows 10 in Eclipse. Okay, so um, my preference is to have one editor, even though Eclipse is a little bit bloated, a little bit big uh, sometimes. It's still uh, very nice to have uh, one editor where you can do C++ code. Uh, Java code, both that C++ and Java could be taken and run on um, different operating systems such as Linux and uh, Mac. Java code, obviously you can take it and take a jar file and run it as is. C++, you would have to compile it uh, for the Linux and Mac operating systems uh, separately. But nevertheless, if you use the GCC and uh, G++ compilers, uh, that should be a fairly straightforward task, especially compared to uh, using Microsoft's Visual Studio C++ compiler. Okay, so uh, a few prerequisites that you need to make sure that you have is, first of all, you need to make sure uh, to write Java code that you have the Java Development Kit, the JDK. Uh, my preference uh, to download this as quick as possible is to go to www.ninites.com. And then that way you can go ahead under developer tools, you can download um, JDK 64-bit uh, version and right now version 8 is the latest. Uh, you can also try downloading the newest version of Eclipse right here. Um, I've been having problems with that because I think maybe I already have a version of it installed. So I'll show you how to do that a little bit more reliably. But go ahead and just click get your 9 to get the JDK if you don't have it already. The nice thing about 9 is, is it will give you an installer that will basically check and make sure you have the latest version, uh, which I do. Uh, you'll see if I go to show details, it says, okay, up to date. But if you didn't have it at this point, you would be, it would basically go ahead and download it and install it for you. So that's uh, step number one is to have the basically the compiler and the, the development tools for Java. Now we want to go and make sure that we have the compiler and development tools for uh, C++ and especially for uh, doing that on Windows without Visual Studio. So what we want to do is go ahead and um, download uh, the the C++ con uh, compiler toolchain called MinGW64. Okay, now there's two versions. There's a MinGW, which is the original toolchain, and then there's a MinGW64, which, uh, for whatever reason, seems to be the version that is updated more frequently. So, we want to go ahead and download MinGW, and the link that you're going to look for when you Google it, uh, it's the second one right here, the SourceForge link. So go ahead and click on that, and just go ahead and click the download button for MinGW64install.exe and that will install and give you a new link here okay so go ahead and double click that click yes next and then you want to go ahead for version you'll just click the newest one for me it's 6.10 uh, go ahead and click the 64-bit version of the architecture that's assuming you're using a 64-bit version of Windows 10, which if you're using Windows 10, you probably are. And then everything else you can leave the same, POSIX, SEH, and zero. Go ahead and click next. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just download it to the desktop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and down, uh, put a, a kind of dummy folder there and in browse. I'm just gonna put it in that folder that is on the desktop. And go ahead, I don't want shortcut menus. Just want it to be there. Um, so the installer is kind of iffy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work for you, what I would do is just go back to the main SourceForge page, and you can actually just click on Files and manually find what you're looking for. With SourceForge, if you go look on the right here, you'll see Downloads Per Week. And kind of just follow whatever's the most popular to get where you need to be. Uh, as The only thing is we don't want the 32-bit. We want the 64-bit. Um, of course, it's up to you what version you want, but we're doing the 64-bit install. Do the personal builds. You see, it's the most popular. MinGW is what we're looking for. Um, I want the newest 6.10. You can see there's a lot of downloads over there. Uh, POSIX, SEH, and then uh, again, there's the download. So I could go ahead and download this. You'll see it's just a it's just a zip file, a .7 a seven zip file. 
Um, and basically that's going to download exactly what this installer just downloaded. So I can click next and finish and you'll see in my MinGW I have a MinGW64 folder with a bunch of other files. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, actually close this browser. I'm going to open up my PC, go into the C drive, okay? And I'm literally going to take this MinGW64 folder and just drag it into my C drive. Uh, this is just kind of the standard place to put your MinGW. Um, I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit. MinGW64. Okay, so there it is, MinGW64. If I go ahead and open it up, you'll see the main folder of interest is the bin folder. Uh, and specifically, you're going to see the G++ and GCC executable files for uh, compiling. You'll also see another important one down here, GDB, which is the debugging uh, program to help you debug through Eclipse. Okay, so now I have both my Java uh, and C++ uh, compiler, so to speak, if you want to use that lingo for Java. Um, so I can kind of, again, this is trash. I can get rid of this. All right, so now the last thing I want to do is actually I'm going to open Chrome up one more time, and I'm going to go ahead and download Eclipse. So www.eclipse.org. Okay, so go ahead and download. Neon is the newest one as of July 2016. Uh, click the download button. You'll see it's already got me on the 64-bit version. If you're using a 32-bit operating system, it will probably auto-detect that. Download that one instead. Okay, so you'll see I have this downloader. I'll just minimize this for now. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click that, double click it. And the installer is going to basically show me all the different types of Eclipse IDEs. And I actually just want this first one, Eclipse IDE for Java developers, because I'm going to eventually add. Uh, the C++ features to the Java Developers Edition. So I don't actually want to start menu, but I will keep that desktop shortcut. And um, for now, this is fine. I'm just going to install it on the desktop in a java-neon folder. So the installation is pretty quick. Just takes about maybe 20, 30 seconds. maybe 40, 50 seconds. All right, here we go. So you can see I have this Java neon icon. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, close this up. I don't need to launch it now. Uh, well, I will anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, Java neon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the default workspace. All right, so um, uh, close the welcome screen. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, basically create a simple Java program. So I'm just going to right click over in the package explorer, click new uh, Java project. So I'll call this my first Java program, so to speak, even though maybe it's not my first Java program. And I'll just click Finish. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of expand that my first Java program, right click on Source, and then New Class. Okay, I'm just gonna call this, um, just call it Main, whatever you want. Uh, make sure that you click this Public Static Void Main we're just going to make a very simple program and then click finish and you'll kind of get the a shell of a program okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and write a simple program that says system dot out dot print line my first feel like a liar my first Java program but we're going to go with it my first Java program Save it, and then we'll go ahead and hit the play button. My first Java program. Okay, so we got our first Java program.
Okay, so now what we, what we need to do is, if you recall from earlier, we downloaded the standard Java IDE for uh, the standard Eclipse Java IDE. So I can't actually create C++ projects in this particular IDE yet. Okay, so notice if I click right, right click, I say new project. You'll see some some things in here, general, um, Maven, and examples. But what I want to see is C C++. And I don't have that yet. Okay, so what I need to do is I actually want to go back and to uh, Chrome and just open up Google and just type in Eclipse CDT. Okay, and probably the first link that comes up, eclipse.org slash CDT. Click on that and you'll see the download button. And then what you want to do is basically figure out uh, what particular version of Eclipse you have uh, and for us, we have Neon. We know it's. We know that we have Neon. If you don't know what version of Eclipse you have, maybe you're using an older version. Just go into Eclipse Help About Eclipse, and you'll see uh, up at the very top version Neon release 4.6. Okay. So what I want to do is actually um, just go and find the um, P2 software repository. You'll see for each particular version. For me, I'm using Neon, so I click there, and it's actually just the address. Notice it says. This URL is an Eclipse software repository. It'll actually kind of show you what to do. But I just want to right click, copy this particular address up here. Okay, and then I'm going to go back into Eclipse. I can shut this main.java. I'm going to click help and then install new software. Go ahead and just paste the address in there and click, uh, you can click add if you want, type CDT, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Click OK, and it's basically going to go out to the internet and find some packages to install. And so it's up to you. I'll just go ahead and install everything. Um, but you see, it's basically the the C plus plus and and C kind of tools. Click Next, and kind of click through some of these screens. Next, accept the terms, and click Finish. Okay, so again, what I'm doing right now, what's happening is that we're installing uh, the tools so that Eclipse will basically understand uh, C++. It'll, it'll give Eclipse a lot of extra uh, kind of tabs that you can enable and debugging tools, things like that. I guess not necessarily debugging tools, but just the, the windows and the, the framework to actually be able to uh, deal with C++ code and header files instead of uh, Java. Java files and, and uh, Java programs. So we'll go ahead and let this uh, finish what it's doing. Hopefully it just takes a second. We'll go ahead and pause it while we're waiting. All right, we are back. That actually ended up taking about five minutes to download uh, the entire CDT package. And you'll see it asked me to restart a clip. So we'll go ahead and restart now. It's basically going to uh, add in all the C++ buttons and screens and things like that. Okay, so go ahead and close that. Um, you'll see I still have my project back. You'll notice some um, looks quite a bit different, right? You see a, a number of new things up here. Um, but we have our Java project, right? So I can uh, open that up if I want. And you can see, run it, my first Java program. Okay. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the Package Explorer, just like I did before, New. And I'm going to click Project. And you'll see that now there are uh, C and C++ options. So I'll go ahead and click the C++ project, click Next. And um, you'll notice. Uh, we actually want the MinGW toolchain. It's not there. If you unclick check show uh, project types that are basically uh, not supported, you'll eventually scroll down and see MinGW. Um, and that's the one that uh, gets give our project name. So my first C++ program. And then you'll click finish. Click yes. Remember my decision. It basically wants to gave you the C++ view. If you kind of click up here, you right click, show text, it'll show you a C++ versus Java view. You'll basically see the icons at the top will change a little bit depending on which view uh, you're in. 
So I'm gonna come into my first C++ program. There's nothing in there right now, so just click New on the on the program. Click New um, Source File, and I'm just gonna call this main.cpp. Click Finish. Okay, I'm gonna actually come over. I have some uh, C++ code, and this is actually C++ 11 code, so the newest C++ standard. Um, and I will say uh, instead of hello world, we'll say something like my first C++ program. Again, I'm lying, but for the sake of example. Um, so notice we have a bunch of errors in here. Basically, uh, Eclipse is not recognizing uh, G++. It doesn't know where to find it. So that's the last thing we need to do is basically tell it where MinGW is. Uh, the long way to do this is to actually set it up in your Windows environment variable or restart your computer. Uh, but you actually don't need to do that, although it may be a good long-term solution, so you don't have to keep doing this. But all we really need to do is right-click on the, the C++ project, click Properties, go down to C++ C++ Build, click on Environment, and you'll actually see some MinGW stuff in here. Um, you'll see in Path it has MinGW Home, which is like a variable slash bin, and then up here MinGW Home. We basically need to tell it where our MinGW Home is, which for us, we put it in C slash min GW64. So you would basically put it wherever you happen to put it. Click OK. So essentially it's going to look in min GW64 slash bin for that GCC and uh, G++ uh, programs that it cannot find. So click OK. And you'll notice it'll basically automatically recompile it without us having to do anything, hopefully. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yep, there it goes. And then you can go ahead and click play. Uh, maybe we need to go ahead and let me close the Java. Okay, now we've built the Java program. Click play over here. There we go. Okay, so click play, then go ahead and click local C, C++ application. Sorry, I got a little confused. It was, I guess this was for C++. And over here was for, uh, perhaps it was set up for Java. I guess I can switch it maybe right here. Okay, so uh, basically you see that we have uh, C++. And then if I come back up here, Java, Java, C++. Okay, so again, this is C++11. You, you'll notice that it has the for each type of loop and the auto variable types in there. So we can run both C++ and Java in Eclipse on Windows 10. All right, thanks for your time. Have a great day.